Okay, so if you've ever wanted to learn how to take a 3D model and apply a clay effect in something like Adobe Dimension, I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna jump back into Adobe Dimension and I'm going to show you how you can take any 3D model throw it in there and apply a clay effect. Now this can be a colored clay, let's say blue for example. You might have a blue clay effect on a product and this is useful because you can actually mock up your designs onto this product. So you might have blue clay, blue background and then your design work stands out. So it's pretty fun and easy to do and we're gonna jump to the screen right now and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe Dimension and you can see I have a new document. Now over here on the left, we have all the starter assets. These come free with Dimension. If you don't see this panel, just go down to the bottom left corner, click the box, and there we go. Now I'm gonna go up here to my libraries, and anything I download from Adobe Stock has its own library here. So I've got a bunch of different 3D models. I'm gonna drag in laptop for this tutorial, but you can use any one that you like. I'm then going to use one, two, and three on the keyboard. Those are the camera controls to adjust the position, the pan, the rotation, the zoom, all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna tinker with this until I get something I like. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do before I go any further is I'm going to add a camera bookmark. Now you can do that up here. I'll just delete the existing one I've got, click the plus icon, give it a name and press return. Now this creates a bookmark. So inevitably when you adjust the camera, and you want a quick way to get back to your front camera, boom, there you go. So bookmarks are incredibly useful to transition between different camera views. Now, depending on the 3D model that you import, you might just have one object like this one here, or it might come in a group. And if you expand the group, there might be lots of objects. Now you'll need to repeat the following steps to each object in your group. But if you're like me and it just has one object, then you only need to do this once. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over here, switch back to the starter assets, go to materials and pick a material. You could have wood if you wanted, but because we're creating a clay effect specifically, I'm gonna go with matte. Drag this onto my laptop object and there you go. It applies that matte gray to everything. Now what I can do is I could just click on the laptop text here and click on this color icon here to select the material, or the quick way in is to double click on the little cube or object thumbnail, and it takes me in. Now I can pick a base color. So we could adjust the hue there. The hue? No, the lightness and the saturation, that one. The hue is here, so we could go with any color we like. Let's, uh, let's go with a bluey kind of purple, and you could spend ages tinkering with this. There we go, something like this. Now any colors that you do use will be saved as a recent color down here. So you can always get back to that and that will become really useful in a moment as well. Now, depending on your product, it may already come with some textures, some metallic textures, glows and normals in all of these spaces. Now, because I applied a matte effect, these are all now blank and they have a plus sign. This means that I can add a texture if I wanted. If yours does come with a texture and you don't apply your matte material first, just open each of these up, click the trash can and remove any existing texture from your model. Once you've done that, just make sure your opacity and your roughness are both at 100% and bring your metallic and your glow down to zero. If you bring metallic up, you can of course see that it starts to look more metallic and the glow uh, you can bring this up if you like, it kind of depends on what you're going for, but I'm gonna keep this all the way at zero. Next, what I'm gonna do is just come back out of that by clicking the back icon or just clicking anywhere on the workspace. And I'm going to select the environment, go to the background color picker, and there we go. This is the same color that I used. It's recently saved it there. Boom, we can apply this. And there we go. We have the product and the background that are the same color. Now it looks slightly different on the product because of course we have lighting in play and we haven't actually rendered this yet. So if we go up here, we can click and depending on your processing power, it will take more or less time to render. 
Something else I'm also going to do is select the artboard or the canvas by clicking on the size up here and just deselect the grid. And there we go, we've done most of the work now, but the only other thing we're going to do is go up here to lights and we can just experiment with some different lighting. So if I just click a few of these and you can really find which one works for you, you can see how the different lighting effects affect the surface of the object differently. Some parts blend a bit too much into the background. But once you've found one that you are happy with, you can then make sure you have environment light selected in the scene and you can adjust the intensity of the light so you could make it brighter. You could even check colorize and add a color if you wanted. And you can also adjust the rotation. So if you'd like it to be in front of the display, shining on this part, you can adjust that as well. And you can see on my MacBook Pro, it's trying its best to render this. And you can tinker around with the settings until you get something where the body of the laptop and the screen both match the background. In fact, I'll just try and do that now. So we'll bring that intensity down a little bit. Maybe just move this rotation around. There we go, something like that. And essentially when you're happy, you can go up to render. You can select your current view or if you have a specific camera, you can select that one. Give it a name, we'll call this clay. I'd recommend selecting high. This is going to take a lot longer, but you'll get a much better end result. You can choose whether you want PSD, PNG formats, select a location by clicking here, click render and dimension will do its thing and render out your final design. But let's cancel that one second because there is one more thing that we can actually do. And that is we can go up here and apply a graphic. So you might have your own graphic here. In fact, you can select your model, go to file down to import and select place graphic on model. Now this might be your design work that you'd like to mock up on the screen. I haven't got anything like that to hand. So I'm just gonna grab an icon here. This comes with dimension and I can drag this onto the laptop. And then I can move this around. I can scale it proportionally holding shift or I can stretch it if I want to, but pretend this is some design work and then you could position your screen mockup or whatever it is, wherever you like onto the device. Or you could just render it on its own as a clay image and apply your design work in something like Photoshop. But once you're done, just go back up to render. It's got all the same settings. Render again. Yes, we're gonna discard any unsafe progress. We're gonna re-render that and it will render out and then you will get something that looks like this. And there we go. So that is how to apply a clay effect to a 3D model all in dimension. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.